New shooter coverage of Cine Gear 2023 is sponsored by B&H and Atlas Lens Co. I'm Eric Nancy with NewShooter.com. We are at Cine Gear 2023. I'm at the Aperture booth with Brandon and uh, wow, you guys are here big. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Everyone's been asking us, where are the new lights? Where are the new lights? Where are the new lights? We're like months and months and months and I can only say so much uh, but without giving away the secret. And now I'm excited to be finally showing off some of these prototypes for later yes, in the year. And I knew something was coming. Yeah. I kind of felt it on my bones. I felt it. I mean, I've been like wanting to tease these so much. But it's like, but everyone was saying, Brandon, you can't accidentally leak a product again. So I helped <laughs> my Again. Dog. Yeah, I've done it before on accident. All right, well, let's talk about it. We got two new fixtures. We've got a new Fresnel. We got a spotlight. I mean, this is some good stuff. Where should we start? Yeah, let's start with these two new fixtures that I have right behind me. These are the new Electrostorm lights from Aperture. That's the Electrostorm CS15 right over there and the new XT26 right behind me over here. So, I mean, that's a new naming scheme, so let's talk about that real quick. The C uh, actually stands for the same thing it's always stand for, color. The S stands for high spectrum, just like with the Amaran 200 XS. That's because these are super high SSI uh, chipsets inside the CS15, and that's 1,500 watts of output. So it would be the brightest light in the Aperture lineup if it weren't for the light that's right behind me, which is the XT26. So the X stands for crossfade like it usually does. The T, though, stands for tint control, because because these aren't just bicolor lights. These are dynamic white with CCT and tint control, so you can adjust the green magenta as well. And that 26 stands for 2,600 watts of output. So that right there is the biggest and brightest light in the entire Aperture lineup. Now that's a new that's new for Aperture because you didn't have that green and magenta tint with the X versions, right? That's correct. This is the first uh, white variable white light LED that we have with green magenta tint control. So that's 2,700 Kelvin to 6,500 Kelvin uh, color temperature range, and then between 3,000 and 6,000 Kelvin, you're going to get plus minus 0.50 DUV green magenta shift. Very nice. Now these are punchy lights. You got to keep them cool. That's also something new going on. Exactly. Inside each of these lights, we're using new advanced liquid cooling systems for both of these lights, and they actually share the same body, so they share the same liquid cooling system as well. That's fantastic. Now that's that's again, that's all yeah. new technology you guys are playing yeah. with. There's so much new technology into these guys. You know, in addition to the Bowens mount, because these uh, lights are so much bigger and they need new modifiers to really take advantage of the output, mm -hmm. we actually integrated not only the Bowens mount but also the new Aperture A mount with each of these lights. So now everyone's been coming out with their own proprietary mount. Uh, we finally decided it was time with these new big lights, um, with these new electric storm lights, to kind of show off what we can do. So we have on the CS15 a a F14 Fresnel, which is a 14-inch diameter Fresnel that has a variable uh, focus range from 18 degrees to 45 degrees. But what makes it more special than just your average Fresnel and what the A mount really takes advantage of is the fact that the A mount has electronic contact points. Mm. So it can actually operate this Fresnel in a motorized spot flood. There's a gear, there's a belt inside each of the Fresnels that basically allows you to motorize spot flood from 18 to 45 degrees, whether it's on the fixture, whether it's from the control box, whether it's from Sidus Link, whether it's from DMX. You can do that all with the aim out and then with the uh, modifiers like the reflectors or the even the barn door adapter that are not motorized the aim out still has a purpose and instead of being in, in addition to just being super heavy duty you also have electronic contact points that communicate what light modifier is on the fixture so that means especially with the cs15 which is a full color fixture if i throw on the wide reflector if i throw on the medium reflector if i throw on the tight reflector i'm gonna get different uh, effects on my cct and on my white point and the cs15 can actually adjust the output of the light accordingly to correct it to bring it closer to true accurate white and this xt26 can do the same thing it just uh can't do it as much because it's not a true full color fixture it, it, but it can affect with some of that CCT adjustment and some of that green magenta tint adjustment. Fantastic. Now, I, when I understand with the new Fresnel, uh, it's a, with the electronic context, you can make changes to the to the to the you know the, the angle and all that, the, how wide it is with the Citus app as well. Yeah, we're going to be implementing in the Citus app in the future too. So throughout all the modes of uh, connectivity, you're going to be able to access it. And the, the, both of these lights come with pretty much everything you need. Of course, DMX 512, CRMX, Citus Link, um, and on both of these big, big control boxes. They now have two Ethernet ports now, so you can daisy chain uh, your Ethercon. Uh, very nice, very nice. Now these controllers are uh, quite uh, impressive. They're large. They are very There's a large. reason for that. Talk to me yes. a little bit more about the uh, controllers. Now, the reason why these are so large is because they're powering such large, high output lights. The CS15 is a 1500 watt output. That means the LED is drawing about 1800 watts from the 
in the for the control box, and then the uh, Fresnel draws about 50 watts while it's in motion, and then the motorized yoke draws about 200 watts while it's in motion. Um, so this guy's gonna come with a 20 amp plug, the, the normal crisscross plug like that for the U.S. Because of course in the U.S. we are dealing with lower voltages than we are dealing with overseas. Yeah. Overseas you're gonna be able to standardize your plugs a lot more easily. But um, if you want to be running that at 15 amps for a normal 15 amp, house, 15 amp uh, household outlet, you can also get a separate uh, 15 amp cable, which will limit the output to be safe within 15 amps. And the same thing goes for the 26, uh, the XT26 right here, which has about a 3,200 watt power draw for powering the LED at full output, that full 2,600 watt output. And then you can, of course, that means it comes in the US with a 60 amp Bates paddle. And then on top of that, if you want to limit it down to you be using it inside of a household outlet, again, we will be selling a cable that limits it to 15 amps, so you can just plug it into your standard household Edison outlet. Um, and then, again, with the motorized Fresnel, the motorized yoke, that can be swapped onto each of these. Um, it adds about 50 uh, watts and then 200 watts for the Fresnel and the yoke. Fantastic. That's that's great stuff. So now we covered these lights, right? We did a good job with that? Uh, no, there's still a little <laughs> bit more to talk about. Both these lights, because they're super professional, they're super heavy duty, we're designing them to be IP65 dust and water resistant. So the only light that in our lineup that currently does that is the MC Pro. It's a little guy, really easy to make, yeah. as waterproof as a phone, right? No, this guy we're also designing to be IP65. So in addition to the liquid cooling, in addition to the mount, it's super dust and weather resistant alongside these guys. They're super bright. Um, I haven't... We are not going to release full full specs on all the light yet because as their prototypes, they're still tweaking, being tweaked and still making changes to them. But the CS15 is basically going to be equivalent to a 1.8K HMI in daylight. And this yeah. guy, the XT26, is really, really close um, to the metrics for a, an aging or clo even close to brand new uh, 4K HMI. So you're going to get tons of output out of these guys, especially when you throw on something like that narrow reflector right there. I mean, this is something a lot of people have been waiting for in LED technology. Yeah. Getting to that point, yeah. we're kind of, we're there and then we're going farther faster. Exactly. Once we finally had to throw a Bates paddle on the light, I was like, okay, hopefully we're stepping into HMI territory at this point. Uh, right, um, right. With all the accessories that we have, um, like I said, they have both the A mount and the Bowens mount, so we can even use the Spotlight Max that we have back there as well. Now, and the A mount, I mean, this is obviously, it's more robust yeah. than the B, than your regular Bowens mount because it needs, you need a little bit more girth for these type of extra accessories that are coming yeah. from. Exactly. The F14 for now is a big reflector. It is a big modifier. It's 14 inches in diameter, and that's a glass for now that has motors inside of it. So it is a heavy guy, and that's why we need the A mount um, that is supported by this. So, and then also, uh, one thing I did forget to mention, um, the CS, the S in the CS15, the stands for high spectrum. Um, so exclusively on the CS15 right there, we do have a dual blue LED chipset like we have in our Amaran lights. So that means in D56 SSI, we're getting an SSI score of 86 in D5600 Kelvin. And then in tungsten, we're getting an SSI score of 89. So these are our highest uh, color quality, highest spectrum lights in the Aperture lineup, because we're really trying to show off what the CS15 can do. That's fantastic. Okay, so I also see back here, there's a motorized yoke going on. Yes, exactly. The motorized yoke that has um, you can swap it onto either the XC26 or the CS15. They both come with the standard aluminum yoke, but you can also swap out this motorized yoke. It is optional, not everyone's gonna need it. You can operate it from DMX, you can operate it straight from the controller, um, and they're gonna give you 360 degrees of pan, as well as 270 degrees of tilt control. Fantastic. Okay, spotlight time. What about that spotlight? Let's talk about the, the new Aperture Spotlight. Yeah, of course, the new Aperture Spotlight. The new Spotlight Max is a beast of a modifier. It's super heavy, uh, it's super heavy duty, and it's gonna be great for everything from your 600 watt lights and up. So things like the 600D Pro all the way up to the XT26 that we have over here. You're gonna be able to do a lot with uh, the Spotlight Max because it's optimized for these larger light modifiers. Of course, the smaller the size of your LED chip, the more efficiency you're gonna get, but you're gonna be able to use it even on this big guy right here, which means you have a 2600 watt projection light with dynamic white, CCT, green magenta shit. You have so much to do with the Spotlight Max. Um, and what new does it have besides just the old Spotlight mount? Um, one thing that everyone's been asking for is the ability to be able to rotate gobos with the Spotlight Max. So 
With each Spotlight Max, we also include a rotatable gobo holder that can support A mount, uh, a, a size and B size gobos. So you can throw that in and with the gear, you can adjust the positioning of your gobo. So you can fine tune it. You don't have to take it out, burn your hands into the gobo and then kind of put it back in and try to hope that it's at the right angle every single time. You can rotate it there. We also have a dual layer iris that is available separately. And the biggest thing that I think is the most uh, unique thing about the Spotlight Max is that it comes with not only the 19 degree, 36 degree, and 50 degree lens options that we have, you can buy one of those lens options. You can also get an ETC lens adapter that allows you to use your existing ETC source for lenses. So especially if you're a rental house that has a lot of those five degree, 10 degree, 14 degree, 70, 90 degree specialty ETC lenses, um, you're gonna be able to throw those onto the Spotlight Max and use them with all of our lights. So imagine you have your 15, uh, your CS15 or your 600C Pro, you have the Spotlight Max and you have a five degree ETC Leco lens on there, you can beam that directly into a Sierra Less Reflector and get amazing light quality. Fantastic. There's a lot of new stuff here. It's a lot of new stuff, a lot of information. I really want everyone to come to the show. And if you can't, of course, we'll be showing these off at more and more shows globally because these are the official announcement of these new lights. Again, I'm super, super excited. Okay, now this is the tough one. We've talked about a lot of products. Let's get a little idea of pricing on these and availability. What do you think is going to happen here? I don't have pricing on these quite yet. I do will say that they are going to be priced for professional level rentals and professional gaffers. They're not going to be... Uh, the, the most affordable things in the market, but they're also going to be priced very, I think, competitively and according to their value. And then availability, though, uh, right now we're looking at early Q4, but I'm pushing the team to see if we can get it even, even sooner. Okay. So that's what we're looking at right now. All right. Thanks a lot, Brandon. Of good course, stuff. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Have a good sunny gear. <laughs> thanks.